Okay, everybody, so what we're going to do now <coughs> is to build some graphics based on the data set that we have. So first, I'm just going to double click on the data set. And I get it here. I'm going to get rid of this. And so, you know, what I would like to do is to plot, say, um, you know, take one of the variables that we have from before. So lexicopocles in the article over uh, the number of uh, article year category, which is basically, you know, those four uh, categories, those, those four time periods. So before I do any type of analysis, one of the, the important things here is the following. When I look at this variable here, so article year category, let's just go there. Here we go. Um, this article year category is, as you might remember from the previous video, it's like one, two, three, four. But if you look at the, uh, the type of variable, this variable is listed as a uh, continuous variable. Now, this is not really what we want. Uh, what we want is an ordinal variable, because again, these are categories of uh, uh, period. So, it's not that, you know, the period 1, which is from 1840 to 1880, uh, I guess, is just, you know, the number 1. It's, a ca it's an ordinal number. It's number 1. You'll see later, you know, why this is important. But basically what I did was just to click here and I selected ordinal. So I changed it from uh, continuous to ordinal. Okay, fine. So now let's, you know, just draw a couple of graphics. So first thing I do is graph then graph builder and then here I can start throwing my uh, my variables so the first thing that I want is to plot um, let's say here on the x-axis I will want to have like you know the different year categories so one two three and four so what I do is that I drag so I click keep clicking and then put the the article year category right here so right now you have one, two, three, and four. Now very important. Uh, the reason why you know it was important to change the category from continuous to ordinal is that if it were continuous, what you would have here is something like one, one and a half, two, because you know that's what a continuous variable is. Because I have set it to ordinal, it only has the ordinal category. So one, two, three, and four. Now, what I am going to do next is to take the Pocles uh, and throw it here. Okay, so now I have the number of Pocles in my, in my, uh, in my graphic. But I don't know if it's clear, it's probably not very clear from the graphic, but, uh, from the video. But there's a bunch of, you know, little dots here. And this is not really easy to, to, to see. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to right click here and then I'm going to say points. I'm going to say change to and I'm going to say box plot. Now when I say this, uh, basically the, the, the graphic changes. So, um, you know, now I have the number of pockleys uh, for period one, so from 1840 to 1880, then from 1880 to 1920, then uh, 1920 until 60, and then, you know, the most recent one. Now, one thing is very striking. The number of pockets, even though, like, on average, it has been more or less the same, you know, maybe, you know, we even have a little less, the amount of variation has changed quite a bit. So before, you know, some articles were like, you know, all over the place from a lot of pockets all the way up to very little pockets to, you know, a, a limited range. Now, if you want to try more here, one way of doing this would be to further stratify the analysis. So what I mean by, you know, further stratify the analysis uh, is... Like to start, you know, select a group or a subgroup within this analysis 
and then just take just look at that graphic so one possibility here would be to look at article type so article type here uh, primarily means uh, whether it was an original paper where it was like a letter something like this and then I'm gonna basically what I'm going to do is that, that I'm gonna throw article type right here at the top now one thing is you know obvious here um, so for example if you look at review particularly uh, the review papers like then this distinction is even more uh, important so you know there are less uh, Pakli's for review papers today than there were in the 60s uh, or from you know 1920s until the 60s and now you know this pattern is really well defined you can also see that you know this short report in this uh, correspondence Probably, by the way, correspondence in letter, they should be together. I would probably put the two together. In the short report, I think this will have to be combined into either original or review. Probably I wouldn't leave this alone. But this is just, you know, this is just to give you an idea that, you know, the analysis itself uh, can give you some further insights in terms of, you know, how to categorize the the. The information so probably you know I would combine these two and then the the, the content of this uh, has to be distributed between original and review so that in the end you have something that would be whatever you know correspondence which combines these two and then original and review but again this pattern is uh, you know much more clear now this uh, analysis and again you could keep doing this thing over and over again the principle here is Whenever you begin to try to look for patterns and the patterns are not clear, you have to look at subpopulations. So instead of looking the database as a whole, you start stratifying the data. So for example, looking at just original papers or looking at just uh, reviews.